So today we have Richard Vigory, who's one of the legends of direct response marketing. Richard has transformed American politics in the 1960s and 70s by pioneering the use of direct mail fundraising. He has been dubbed the funding father of the conservative movement, and he's motivated millions of Americans to participate in politics. He's founded American Target Advertising in 1965 that helps multiply donor bases, and they've raised over $7 billion for their clients with time-tested direct response marketing. He's also the current chairman and founder of conservativehq.com. Richard, or Mr. Vigory, thanks for joining me. Uh, I'm sorry to tell you, uh, Mr. Vigory passed away about okay. three years ago. Uh, so uh, please, uh, Jeremy, uh, let me just say, add to that uh, introduction. Yeah. Uh, appreciate that very much. I'm 81 years old, just turned 81 a few weeks ago. You look young. I literally, I literally go 12 to 14 hours, five and a half days a week. And, you know, a few people can do that, but I don't know anyone that does that plus enjoys every minute of what they do. And I've been very blessed uh, to identify my unique ability, and I'm very focused on my unique ability, and I uh, enjoy 12, 14 hours a day uh, and don't know the name of anybody that uh, that can keep up with me. And by the way, uh, I jokingly refer to myself, uh, Jeremy, as uh, uh, 003, which means I've been active at the national level of the conservative movement longer than every living conservative except uh, two others. 002 is Dr. Lee Edwards of the Heritage Foundation, a senior fellow there. And if you want, we can hold 001 identity until the end. Uh, yeah, let's, I, let's, see, let's see. try to figure out who is 001. Who's been active in the conservative movement longer than every living conservative? All right, I'm going to make a note of that. You know, talking about you're a pioneer in the industry, I want to hear two things. One, what's been a low point in your life and how you fought through it, and then a proud moment? Start with um, what's been a low point in your life and how you got through those that specific tough time. The uh, well, without uh, you know, uh, a lot of usually it seems like low points uh, are very personal, so I won't, <laughs> won't go into uh, this. But I will say that uh, Winston Churchill, about the last speech he ever gave. Uh, was before a large audience, 50,000 people in, in the United Kingdom there. And they knew he was elderly, wasn't going to probably live much longer. And their people came, a small little town, 50,000 people showed up to hear this speech. And it's well known. Uh, he started with a very soft voice saying, never give up, never give up. And he began to repeat himself, just the same thing, never give up. But each time he said it, he raised his voice. And at the end of his speech, five, six, seven minutes, he's screaming, never give up, never give up, never give up. And that's been kind of a hallmark of, of my life, uh, whether it's personal uh, problems, mm -hmm. business problems, you know, if I know that I'm right, and I'm really clear in my, my thinking, you know, I, I won't give up. And it's and I've, uh, my faith is very, very important to me. And uh, so uh, if I'm uh, clear with my God, uh, and, uh, and I'm doing the right thing, you know, never, never give up and keep keep faith that it will work out. And I, uh, some people in the office have a saying that, uh, you know, the well-known saying, God looks after little children and drunks. Well, people in my company have modified it. God looks after little children, drunks, and Richard. <laughs> and uh, it really has worked. Uh, and, and, and walk your faith and, uh, and never, never, never give up. Yeah, I remember hearing that story. It is a powerful story. I think it was was it in Missouri that that speech was. No, uh, a friend of ours who uh, uh, I won't mention his name <laughs> said that uh, where you and I were recently, yeah. but they uh, but he was it was wrong. Uh, in Missouri, he gave his uh, famous uh, Iron Curtain speech. Uh, oh, okay. Forty-six. He uh, Truman was president, and, he, and Truman took him to a, a Fulton uh, uh, College in uh, uh, Missouri and made his famous, uh, you know, uh, a, a Iron Curtain is falling uh, across Europe there. But that speech came in the early fifties. I see. So, Richard, what was a time that you felt like giving up, and that that went entered your brain to never give up? Now, Jeremy, I'm not sure that I. Uh, I ever have had a, a you know feeling of, of never giving up. I just I'm a person of, of great faith, and I just uh, yes, it's tough out there. It really gets tough, uh, 
And but I just would never ever you know give in to uh, to uh, you know a feeling of, of despair. Uh, and uh, you know I feel that uh, you know being uh, per- having a despair and despondency and uh, and feeling giving up is uh, is walking away from your faith. I just don't have that that uh, option. And that's one of the reasons why I'm uh, so uh, active right now is I read that Bible from beginning to end and I can't find the word retire in there uh, and I'm <laughs> called to uh, I'm not called excuse me to succeed but I am called to try and mm-hmm. so uh, uh, as long as I'm focused on uh, you know uh, putting forth the right effort the results are not up to me they're up to, to God I'm called to to be faithful and to uh, put forth my best effort and I enjoy doing that every day every minute of every day so what about proud moment? What's been one of the proudest moments you've had in your career? Well, you know, I think uh, election night, November 1980, uh, when uh, Reagan uh, was elected. We had, for 24 years, we've every two years, we've had a big election party at, at our offices starting in 1966. And uh, we had a big election night party at our office. We had a great address in those days uh, in Tyson's Corner, Virginia, 7777 Route 7. <laughs> and... Uh, we had national media everywhere. Most of the network cameras were there, national radio. And uh, I watched friends of mine who'd never had a drink in their life, I don't think, have a glass of wine that night. Uh, it was just a very heady uh, thing. Uh, the uh, uh, And, you know, I was one of the founders of something called the New Right. And uh, we started around in the mid-1970s. And when we started, we were criticized and attacked, quite frankly, by conservatives, not just Republicans, conservatives. But we knew we were doing the right thing. We knew uh, that uh, we couldn't continue to operate politically as we had in the past. And we began to do things like direct mail and, uh, and be proactive. And, 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 and we literally said, we, those of us, uh, meeting at my home for nine, ten years. We are the alternative to the Democrats, not the Republicans. And we said it long enough, off enough, uh, the political community bought into it. Uh, and uh, all of that criticism went away, of course, when Reagan was elected and the fruits of our effort could be uh, observed by everybody. And uh, so if you're doing the right thing, you know, ignore the criticism. It's one of the things that I've uh, I've learned over the years. I will not let my opponents, my enemies, uh, dictate my my actions. Okay, uh, I've never been one that uh, uh, is afraid to be criticized uh, because I feel like you, if you're in politics, it's oh, like yeah, comes with it, the territory. It does come with the territory. You'd be surprised how many people can't handle that. Uh, they don't want to be criticized in the uh, in the newspaper or on television. Uh, but I'm uh, and, and I've got I'm well grounded. I know uh, uh, what I'm doing, and I know I'm doing the right thing. And uh, I'm not going to let my opponents, my political enemies, uh, dictate my my actions. Mm-hmm. And that's hugely important. Jeremy, I am going to have to rush. Yeah, my- I just want you to finish with just tell people where they can find out more about you. And uh, what what site should we point them towards? Yeah, I have a, a blog website uh, called uh, conservativehq.com. Yeah. And it's unique. It's the only website out there that's focused on relaunching, building the conservative movement. So if you're interested in the conservative movement, conservative politics, uh, go to conservativehq.com. Yeah. And this is my book, by the way. Hold uh, it up a little bit. Yeah. There you go. Uh, Take over. And uh, it's available on Amazon. And uh, it's uh, the it's a, also a hole in the marketplace. It's the only book uh, ever uh, uh, printed, uh, written that deals with the Civil War exclusively in the Republican Party. So you want to know the history of this, where we are now, and where we're going to go, and how conservatives can take over the Republican Party, govern America in a few years. You're going to find it in, in takeover here. Uh, the um, our company with 80 employees uh, is American Target Advertising, and you can uh, reach uh, me at uh, uh, my initials, uh, R-A-V, at, uh, excuse me, R-A-V, A-T-A, my company's initials, at AOL.com, okay. R-A-V, A-T-A, mm-hmm. at AOL.com. Richard, thank you. I want to be the first one. I want you to keep living longer, so go to your doctor's appointment. I really appreciate it. This has been a great experience. Fantastic. Thank you. Invited. Thank you.